Welcome to this lesson. Today we're going to solve a problem from Fundamentals of Traffic Crash Reconstruction Volume 2 by Daly, Shigemura, and Daly. Uh, example problem 8.5. And in this problem, a 3,000 pound car is initially at rest and is rear ended by a 5,000 pound pickup truck that is initially going at 5 miles per hour. And the assumption is that the coefficient of restitution is 30%. And one is simply asked to calculate the post-impact velocities of both vehicles involved. So let's start by uh, drawing our scene. Let's get a uh, rectangle out here. And because this problem asks to uh, neglect tire forces, we're going to make it a uh, friction zone of coefficient of friction basically equal to zero. Um, let's go ahead and get our asphalt texture. Let's get some vehicles in here for our poor car at rest. We'll make this guy a Cadillac, and let's color him blue. And for our truck, let's get a Ford F-150. And let's make him orange. And I'd like to set these guys at uh, specific locations. It doesn't really matter for the problem, but it makes uh, you can make your work a little more precise if you specify the uh, initial starting positions, if you're able to. Okay, and we're just going to make a little lane here. So our Cadillac is in his lane, minding his own business. a little stop bar. Okay. So there's a stop bar. He's in his lane, minding his own business. Let's freeze all this stuff. And let's freeze that rectangle. And he gets rear-ended by the Ford. The Ford, we need to change its weight. Um, the problem asks us to consider a 5,000 pound pickup truck. Um, and so in kilograms, that's 2,267.96. And the Cadillac, our car in the problem, is 3,000 pounds. And that corresponds to 1,000. 360.77 kilograms. And of course the initial speed of the truck is five miles per hour. There goes the simulation auto automatically updating. Um, and you can change the uh, collision parameters by going to auto EES. And um, there you'll find the relevant parameters for your simulation. In this case, the most important one is the coefficient of restitution, and the problem asks us to consider a value of 0.3. So let's have a look at this collision. There it is. 
is. We could even look at it in uh, slow motion. And we could look at it in uh, right or left projection. So everything is set. Now what would we expect? Let's bring out the whiteboard. We know for a, uh, a one-dimensional collision model, here's object one, here's object two, object one moves into object two, and then they presumably both go moving off with some post-impact velocity. We can write the change in velocity experienced by object one, and we know it's going to be in the reverse direction, and for object two, it would be along the, uh, let's call it the x-axis, so it would be along the x-direction. So for object one, it would be negative the value of the closing speed at impact, which I write v rel sub i, this means the initial relative uh, velocity times one plus the coefficient of restitution all over one plus the mass of vehicle one or object one over the mass of vehicle two. Whereas for vehicle two, it's very similar, except it's a positive quantity in this problem. And the ratio is M2 over M1. So, let's go to my favorite website, Wolfram Alpha, and let's first calculate what we should expect for um, the Cadillac, which I'll call, let's call that vehicle two. The closing speed is five miles per hour. The restitution is 0.3 and all that goes over quantity. Um, it's just one plus 3,000 over 5,000. Um, so we'll just make that over three fifths. And good old Wolfram Alpha says we should expect a Delta V for the Cadillac of 4.0625 miles per hour which would also equal its final velocity since uh, it was initially a rest. And if we wanted to know what the delta V is for vehicle one, simply do that. And that is negative 2.4. 375 miles per hour, which implies v, the final velocity, V1F, is equal to the initial velocity minus 2.4375 miles per hour. And we could just do that here. So the expected final velocity of vehicle one should be about 2.5625 miles per hour from this model, from this one dimensional uh, collision model. And that agrees with uh, what Daly has in his book. Um, he gives the same answers for the car and trucks post impact speed. Now let's see, what does virtual crash say? You can access the collision properties again by going to auto EES. And you use a selection tool to go through event to collision event to collision event because a single 
uh, crash can have a number of um, could have a number of their of, it, of their own uh, coll collisions. So, in this case, there's only one because there's no secondary contact and there are no other vehicles involved. So you just click on the uh, next contact button and then go to object one and object two, and those will give you all the parameters for uh, both vehicles for the main collision event. And you can see that the Cadillac has a delta V of 4.041 miles per hour. Um, and let's let's again compare that to what was uh, predicted from our one-dimensional one collision model. And the delta V for vehicle two in our simulation is 2.425 miles per hour. Both are pretty darn close to less than 1%. I think that's even less than uh, half a percent. And uh, let's look at the final speeds. Of course, um, the Cadillac was initially at rest, so its post-impact speed is 4.041 miles per hour. And the pickup truck has a final speed of 2.571 miles per hour. Pretty much on the money. We expect there to be small differences between the simulation and the ideal one-dimensional case. Even though we set this up as a collinear model here, there's still uh, suspension and offsets between the uh, point of contact between the two vehicles, the CG locations, and the axles. So we expect there to be some minor um, rotation, some suspension effects, all which can cause these minor differences. But Overall, this, the simulations agreeing uh, with what we would expect from a simple one-dimensional model. Uh, let's take this one step further, and let's look at the uh, log file output. And you do that by going to Report Dynamics and then pressing Create. And that will cause Virtual Crash to spit out a nice log file. And I'm going to copy and paste this data into a spreadsheet tool. I'm not going to copy all the rows, just a few of them. And I'm going to do that for the Cadillac and for the Ford. Okay. Let's make a graph of the Cadillac's velocity as a function of time. And let's throw in the velocity of the Ford pickup truck as a function of time. And the truck is orange and the Cadillac is blue. And that color convention happens to match our plot here very nicely. So we can see on the y-axis are the vehicle velocities and on the x-axis is time. The orange curve, again, is for the pickup truck, and blue is for the Cadillac. Um, we see that the uh, truck's velocity starts at 5 miles per hour, and then once the impact happens, it undergoes a delta V in the uh, negative x direction, and has a final uh, velocity on the order 2.5, 2.6 miles per hour. And the Cadillac starts at rest, undergoes a positive delta V, and has a post impact speed of on the order of four miles per hour. Just as you would expect. So we see the behavior of the virtual crash simulation matches very well what our expectations are from uh, basic accident reconstruction uh, principles. No surprises. Thank you for watching.